Hi, this is Sherry Veronica, Naked Departure Radio, and with me again today is Jewel. Today is our final installment. It was a trilogy. There were two other parts you can find on my channel on YouTube, and today is the third installment, and we are going to discuss today why sometimes you have to go with tough love. You have to let people that you love go and experience what they want to and maybe they'll see that you weren't that crazy after all that you knew what you were telling them and the advice that you were giving them was sound so she Joel, is going to discuss today why she had to let her daughter go Joel, hi hi welcome into this session <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're Yes, so I just want to be a few things clear because I've got a lot of talk, people that know my business more than me. So I am going to be upfront and open and I want to know why my child can't come back at me. Anyhow, so my daughter, whenever my daughter, when I start working like 18, 19, and throughout the time of her working, this child empty her bank account three times on men. You hear? Three times. Then when it was time that the hospital didn't have the medication, I had to go and buy 30 tablets, real pissing money. So after I realized she did it a third time, because at first I never used to take money for the house. So all I made her to do was put your money on the bank so that if anything happened, you could buy your medication. You need your medication, just put your money on the bank. Anyway, so after the third time when I realized that she spent all her money on this fella, I started to make her put money in the house and to put money to put on the bank. How this come about? She started working a job. She It was going well. She come home every Friday and she said, look, mom, I put money on the bank. The account getting fat. The last time I checked the account, it was $1,500. This new guy came to work where she was working. She and him got involved within a matter of three weeks or so that money they died. So she would come home every evening. She would show me the bank bill and I was like, all right, it coming up. You keep putting it there. Then I realized mm -mm, she ain't coming home and telling me nothing no more. She never come and said, well, mom, look, I put no money. So I was like, wait, what going on? Don't tell me she do this again. I said, come on, give me four fifty to help up with this money to buy a tank. She started to cry. Mom, I ain't got the money. I don't know what I do with it. I buy lunch. And she crying because every time you find she out, tears, crocodile tears. I said, all right, let's like, see what they say. I know I tired of your foolishness. When you come, you can put $100 in my hand plus money for the house to feed you. Anyhow, she start putting the $100 to put money by. I do up a ledger. I put the date. And the amount, and I went and opened an account in my name. She did this here for weeks. I got like $1,500 one side on this account. Anyhow, she started going down by the boyfriend sleeping. Oh, before she went down by the boyfriend sleeping, the boyfriend get put up in your mother's house because he would not help do anything. So he had to rent a room. So one week she come and she tell me, well, mom, um, I can't give you the money this week because he get put out and I can help you buy a couple of things for the room. So I was like, well, he does work. Why would he need you to help him? Anyhow, she still ain't put the money. She put the money for the house, but she ain't give me the bank money. Anyway, he moved on in the, the room. So she started spending a couple of nights down there because at this time she had just come over to the hospital. Or, well, not just, but it was newly, she was newly out okay the hospital. So when she come out the hospital, the doctor would tell you, well, you can stay at home and you're going to make sure you take this medication that your mommy could tell me, well, yeah, she just take the medication. Anyhow, so after she start doing well a thing again, she start going down there, then I sleep in. So eventually she moved down there altogether. The money ceased. Not here, really hearing she, something she would just message me and tell me, I just don't take the medication. So then the boyfriend would say, yeah, um, she's taking medication. I said, sure, she take the medication. Anyway, one day now, I home, sit down after not hearing she for a couple of weeks or so. She called me, mom, you got $3,000. That's money I want to, I to keep in a, a ledger too. I said, you're up on your medication because I hear it in she voice. I said, I know you're up on your medication. Anyhow, 
I said, well, I can take a picture on my ledger. I can send it to you. You send me yours. I took the picture on my ledger. I sent it to her, but she can't send back none because she thinks she could trick me. Anyhow, quite then so, a week or so after, or three days after, but it wasn't too long. So I was say like a week, between three days and a week. I can't remember exactly. A police come here. The police say, yeah, use Miss whoever. Well, I got a complaint from Miss P. Watson saying that you stole $3,000 from her. I bring the officer and say, so listen, my daughter bipolar, she's off her medication. And the reason why I have $1,500 belong to her is because she just empty her account, punch him in. And then I am stuck with her medical bills and I can't do it anymore. The police said, well, oh, man, because I realized like, something wrong with she man. All right, I understand your situation, but well, you keep doing what you got to do. That was that. Quick time, so she ended up in the hospital. And I think I gave a part of this year last week. When I got to look for she, no, nothing. Nothing that she got decent working and just gave away she money. I had to go and take my money then to buy things for her to carry it there. Plus two snacks and all sort of thing because she wouldn't eat the food. Because every time that she go back in the hospital, she re does remember what the sister-in-law say. And oh, I was supposed to say this last week. One of the things that if I have to play this tape recording, is I ask her, one of the things you will hear me ask her is, but why don't you like doctor whoever is a, a male doctor that was up there? I said, but why don't you like him? Why do you carry him like that? She said, because auntie sister-in-law says she saw you and doctor upon the, the, the word love making. What are they loving up? You understand? That's what the sister Lord tell my child so that she will start eating the food and she will stop in there and then. You hear? And he said, she saw you and Dr. Tang, pun, you are loving up. And I said, well, child, come on now. Where upon a war could me and this daughter to be loving up? The world is an open space. Huh? I said, why would you believe something like that? But obviously she gonna believe it, right? So I up there coming, going up there, bringing snacks, and I had to buy clothes, and this thing, every evening, I walk up there, I drive up there, so wasting gas, buying snacks, and what's up, because she not eating the food, okay? And that's also one of the times when I, when she was on, that's the same time when she was on the injection, because she want swallowed medication. Anyway, her grandfather from her father's side went up there and looked for her. He gave her $50. The child took the fifty dollars and give it to her boyfriend. She ain't said, "Well, mommy says you use God bring snacks and drink for me. You who alarm on this or put in gas." She gave it to the boyfriend, so I get pissed off. I survey it. What would you want? Tell me. I know upon the time you gonna think, but me, I said, uh, I ain't tell she the top, but I just do what went through my mind. So I went back on her account. I took off three hundred dollars. I put it back on my account because that's the amount of money I spent. I said, well, no, I've been a fool for you. You fattening up a man and suffering your mother. I played that. So I had $1,200 there on her account for her. Anyhow, she get better. The doctor saying she here. The doctor said, uh-uh. Until you are well enough, you will be by your mother. But at this time, she was in she 20s, you know. So and like, I come back, she's there. Anyhow, when she feel like she was good enough, she left here and she went on back on the road. Weeks pass again, she ain't call me. I call she. I tired. I didn't even really care. Night I am my bed now. She said, call me, Mom, you could come for me. Shot hit me. I said, What? I said, All right, I come in there now. I get up, jump two slippers off my foot, and going to the door. Quit time, so the phone rang back. Mom, don't worry, Ma, cause he here crying. I said, Well, listen, if he hitting you, and he beating you. Why don't you just left and call him more? I come in for you. Mom, don't bother man because he here crying. I say, you know what? All right. And I put my phone away back in my bed. Weeks after, same thing happened again. Mom, I done with this. Come for me. I say, all right, I come in. I open the door. I have it at the hill. My phone ring. Mom, don't worry, man. We can work it out. I said, listen to me. I come in for you. She said, no, ma, we gonna work it out. I said, put him on the phone. I said, Sha, what are you put your hands for my child? Ma, I ain't hit she for you. I did talk with she, and she put away, and she on hand is what hit she. I said, listen, if I got a left here to come out there for you, you put this girl on me, because I get freaked something to you. Do not put your damn hands on my child. You understand me? He said, yeah. I said, i serious. Don't let me go. I'll come down there. Anyway, put on the phone. Weeks pass. 
I forget all about this thing now. He will call me. He will tell me she taking your medication. She will call me and say, yes, mama, taking my medication. Then a night now again. The woman called me with the same thing again. Mom, I tired with the phone. Is I done with he for chip coffee. So I said, listen, the same way you get their clothes down there, get them back out here. I can't. I can't. I said, so what you gonna do? All right, we gonna work it out. So it dawned on me. She doing this thing to aggravate my soul or something. I said, because don't tell me that you can know somebody beating you and you can sit down there with them. I said, so you get your clothes up here, how you get them down there? Because I help you carry them down there, so get your clothes. If you really want Leffy, bring some of the clothes, and I will go back for the rest. But uh-uh, don't do it. I said, I put, I said, put him on the phone. He said, I did not hit her or pitch the mind. I hit she. I said, I got no more to say to you. When you see me down there, you're going to know what God you're serving. I put on the phone. Anyhow, she ended up moving out. She had the same shot with the mother, with Shaquille's mother, they went and rent the house. Now, it was my daughter, the, bo the boyfriend Shaq, Shaq's mother, and about four children. So, the, the living, she didn't tell me anything, but a friend of mine saw her and asked me, but you know your daughter living in such, such, such? I said, well, she didn't tell me anything. I asked her, I'm interested. Anyway, months went long, good. I hear she in the quarrels, nothing. One night, no. Mom, I could come back home. So I paused and I was like, oh God, this shit again? Oh, you think so? I said, let me hear you. What's going on now? She said, be the giving shots mother the rent money. And she had paid the rent. And now we overdue like $3,000. And they give you eviction notice we got left. So I oh, my mind, Jesus, God, you want to my God, get she back in here not to confuse my head. I mean, no more sleep now. Because I got the police in and study here again. Anyhow, I said, she all right, look. If you come in, come. But as I tell you before, how you get your things down there, get the back out here. When you start to bring them and I realize that you're serious, I will come for the rest. But right now, get them up here. She paused. I said, let me guess. One of them work it out, right? She said, no. I said, let me hear you. What you got to say? Um, Shot and he mother, that may got no better girl. I said, so what I got to do me? She, but that may got no better girl. I said, so what you already trying to tell me? I ain't got no way to go, mommy. I said, listen to me. I bar you. I bar shot. No, he mother. If you coming home, come. If you are coming, well, that's your business. The child don't allow me to know, well, mom, I can't come back because they're going to feel like you abandoned them. I said, really? They're going to feel you abandon them? I said, well, here, Chum. My door is closed. Don't come back. Don't come back. When she find out, then Shaq mother done had some place to go. It's only she and Shaq who had to look for some place to go. <laughs> but she was telling me about Shaq and the mother because she know the downstairs apartment was supposed to be for she, right? So she feel that I stupid enough to let she, the Shaq, he mother and four children come and live at me. I said, no, it ain't working. Mm? It ain't working. If you would find somebody decent in the first place, you would have been down there. But the things that you was going to pick up, yeah, burn at me. Cause she went and pick one, pick up one the first time a, a thief from up here, down here, what road, and bring at me. My mind tell me, look, cause she got father, did got father check you. Ma was in prison and all sorts of shit. So I thought she listened to me, don't bring you back at me. Are you gonna deal with he too, or are you gonna look for somebody to left to, to live too? You understand? And he that one was the first one. This last one shot wasn't too bad, but any man that can make you spend your money. On him, knowing full well that you sick and you gonna need this money, ain't no damn use neither. So that's why he said the make coming at me. Anyway, shot mother done had some way to go, so she and shot then had to scramble to look for some place to go. I tell she don't come back. Even then, and that wasn't even the inner ring. She and shot break up. She went and find this man that three years younger than me. Now I almost fifty. Yeah, got a few more years and I'm 50. He's three years younger than me. She very picky up. No, she tell me, oh, she want more. She came off her medication because this man tell me. I'm forcing she to take the medication. She ain't a little child. She's the big woman. She gonna know what for she. I said, and this is the man that you love and you claim that love you. Really, at least shot loose. So make sure she takes your medication. 
And when she did take it, then he will call me and say, well, mom, she stopped taking she medication. I can't get she take them. But not this one. This one says straight. He ain't, he ain't forcing she. He ain't reminding she. Nothing. She told me she was off her medications. And then she was in the stage where, as you know, she get in back in the hospital. She spent the whole night on the steps of the Barbados family planning building. You hear what I tell you? This boyfriend ain't come looking for she. He ain't called to ask she what she is. He ain't alert the police. Nothing. You understand? But this is who she went and put herself with. And yo, this is for this mess though. This same boyfriend had a girlfriend overseas. Whenever the girlfriend come into the island, she will go and move out. You hear? This is my child. I'm the... She will have to move out to the, 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 uh, the little room when the girlfriend coming from America. So she went there and she rented a room that was nasty. The bed had mites, so she catch scabies. Scabies is the little mites that's bury themselves into your skin. Now, me and she ain't speaking in terms at that point in time. So when she ended up in hospital, cause she asked you medication and then she got scabies. Hospital called me, I said, look, I tell one already, don't call me. She is a woman. The, but this time she was like 24. I said, she's a woman. I'm done. She ain't gonna kill me. You understand? Anyhow, after talking to the nurse, the nurse said, mom, say, well, you gotta come because she don't hear no for weeks. The, she said the boyfriend will come and wash the clothes and he won't even come and collect them. Right now she wearing the hospital gear. You understand? Mm -hmm. The little clothes that is in the hospital, she got to wear. She said, please, you gotta come and help she. I vexed. Me and my sister get up and they know we gonna do the woman give me the clothes. The woman said, well, these clothes now, you got to do, you got to boil these. You can't put this in your washing machine. You got to boil some hot water and soak them down, throw out that water, throw more boil water to them, and wash them up and put them in the sun. And then bring them back. The plastic bags, like, took one of these things, and you had to burn them because you can't put the clothes back in them. So I had to do this two or three days straight to get she said to wear. Boyfriend, oh, you talk to boyfriend, ain't hey, can't hold the clothes, he ever come in. You know what I'm saying? And she up there like a jackass with temper and heat. Anyhow, when I carry back at the clothes, I think even when I collect them there, she would talk with me. She talked with my sister. I what's no. I care. I don't get that if they said went back for some more, wash them the same way, carry the back up. On the third day in question, six pieces of clothes there, the boyfriend did. I got it there, how she the clothes actually how she doing now, she ain't talking. Because the boyfriend did. So she done talk to the boyfriend about me. And plus to me, the boyfriend, I had to run in because the situation between she and the first boyfriend, Sha, I told this older guy, well, you should know better and you put my child's life in danger. You understand? He let me know, oh, and now you basically she ain't a child, this thing, that's the third thing. So I let my daughter know up front, I don't like him. And he don't like you neither. But you know, she got to do the opposite of everything I tell she saw. That she do. Anyhow, she stopped talking now because the boyfriend there and my sister was talking with she. She look at my sister to know all the rest of the time she talking to me. She stopped talking. Anyway, I said, all right, you take it easy. I get along, but my best the nurse called me back. The girl said, the nurse said, look, do my favor. Talk with she. Because I here trying to help she and she acted like she foolish. I said, sweetheart, listen. I did dealing with this here now for like 10, 11 years. And I said, I get you to do nothing, I said. So, you know, I can tell you, do what you could and what you can do, left out. You hear? Don't let she kill you. Because I ain't gonna let she kill me. You understand? And I did done. And from then, I come home and I block her upon everything. You hear? Everything. Facebook, a friend, and I messaged me now and said, I'm Joelle. You we were like, you don't upon Facebook talk about right, right, foolishness. So she tagged me in it now, and I gone and I look. She bought the play. I mean, look, I don't even want to repeat this because I just embarrassed for she. So I tell my friend, listen, don't tag me nothing to do with this girl. This girl, this girl, it done. It over. I want her. So I blocked she upon that too, and I did done. You hear? I did done from them to know. Once in a blue moon, when my brother and sister in law do what a God do. To see if it affected me, saying that I don't curse anymore, I don't cuss them out anymore. They were saying she to call me. So when she called me, then she will realize that she blocked. So she can't get through. I will see the number come up, the phone will ring, the number come up, and it will cut out because, you know, I got she blocked. Anyhow, so every time.
need to do something, she will call. Then she realized she can't get through to me, so what she did was call my husband. But my husband brought the phone to me and said, well, uh, this, she number, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, uh, do something because I already want she calling me. And I blocked the number in his phone also. Okay? And that was the end of that. So when the walk book said, oh, she put she, she put she mentally ill daughter, uh-uh. Mm-mm. I put she out, but I did tell her not to come back. And I stand, but I stand by what I said. She is not coming back. I was yet to sleep a couple of hours when the nights come no book in here. I didn't lose to sleep at all, period. So no, I don't want her back. So I just wanted to get that out there. And that's the inner she. From what other people just tell me, her behavior has changed. Because if you confront her with the truth now, her reaction is messed up. Because my friend told me, you be how she acts now is look like if she's reprogrammed. Okay? It looks like she has been reprogrammed. Because things that she was able to tell people before, or she got a new story now. It's a whole new set of lies. But I can't be bothered. Who knows the truth, knows the truth, and I'm just happy with that. So that's the end of the side of the sheep. Let me continue now with these two demons up front here. Now, my sister told me some things that I never really had a review before, but I am going to do it now. Because some things have been happening, and I know, I don't know for a fact, but with Amy, it's telling me that it is my brother and sister-in-law. So little things like, just, just to let one know certain things that she does do. My sister said to me, she was sit down there and she remember things that she should have found strange, but, you know, she just didn't take it on. So one day my sister said, this, at this point in time, my sister wasn't speaking. My sister told me, the sister-in-law showed her and tell her, well, look, come and go town with me. So my sister, she get her, she went bed, she put on, she closed the toilet and gone town. From the time the van hit by the man, girl, when just disembarked, I'm going to tell you something. This woman already had a friend there waiting. And she said, she look, my sister said, she look at me and said, all right, angry, I can see her. I walk down. My sister said, well, I didn't even have nothing to do in town. I just come to with her and this woman abandoned me. She said, all I could do is get back up on the same damn van, go in the van stand and then come on back home because she didn't have nothing to do. Now, another example of how wicked and frigate this woman is, right? My sister told me that the same sister-in-law, my brother and their children, along with my sister, her husband and her children, and my next door neighbor, and their children, all they lose to go, um, like, picnicking together. She said my sister-in-law would take the next door neighbor's wife, carry her a little ways from them, but in line of her, so that, you know, they, they would go a, a line of vision in front, like, right directly to my sister. And they would talk and laugh and look at her. She said then, my sister-in-law would get her, drag the woman, and come and tell her, so why you sitting down all the way out here, from me? And why you left me all out there by myself, and got me out there by myself, and you here sitting down? But my sister said, well, well, you and she, who left and gone out there, well, I understand. I tell my sister, look, that's gaslighting. That's the way it's called gaslighting. They will do things to you, and they turn it around and make it look like if you is the body at fault. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, they saw things she just do. Here's another example of how wicked this bitch is. Now, remember, she had my sister wrapped around her finger, believing every lie that my that she she that um every lie that she told my sister, my sister believed every lie. But these are things that she still did. Now, my sister used to make uniforms, school uniforms for her one daughter and for my brother's girl children to go primary school. No. My sister says sometimes she would even pull apart a pants and cut the, the new pants and make it for my sister-in-law's brother. Anyhow, but she said the sister-in-law come to her one day and said, my love, you just met real good. Here, I can't let this talent go to waste. I set it up. I arranged this um, class for you. And it's this there and it's this place. I carry your machine and go now. My sister says she look at it and gets it. No, was she machine? and gone down with this place. Nobody know nothing about the classes, building shut off all sorts. People was like, what? Well, we know nothing about the class, uh-uh. She said she can't, but one no, she tell the sister-in-law when nobody know nothing about the class, so the, the, the sister-in-law pretended to be upset about it. Really? I could go and make a phone call, my or tell me it did. My sister said she ain't hear nothing more for like a couple of weeks about this need to work class till one day. She, the sister-in-law showed my sister. She said, angry, angry, look, here, I got something to show you. 
My sister says she locked through the window because the two houses is closed. When she locked now the girl and she the sister in law, she back door with this dress holding up. My sister said, Where? She said, Yeah, I met this at the needle work class. My sister like me. So my sister say, Oh, what this year's all look real good. Wait, look real good for you. You're like, again, girl, you met my things for me. So the sister in law laughing, no, and fussy. Yeah, I learned, I learned, I mean, do the class and this thing, next thing. So my sister said, and she, she was thinking about, well, well, if it was a mistake that she sent me the wrong place. When she find the classes, why wouldn't she tell me about it? Which means she deliberately saying her on ill will who's chase. Okay? Would you believe this woman had the audacity then to come back and ask? My sister to make her child's school clothes when you just went and learned a class, huh? You want to tell me that this woman is sick, ain't she? Hey, mm? people like she will kill you. You hear me? This woman named her three children, her last three daughters, my second daughter's middle name. I then walk book and tell the people that she's who tell me that she can near she children. My daughter Nisha is two years older than her third daughter. Okay? Now, if you had tell me that name, because which made you the planning a child two years ahead or something, I don't understand it. If you had tell me that name, Kadir, and I named my child it, if I don't ever understand it, but that's what she's saying. She's saying that she told me the, 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 the name that she was going to name her child, and I decided that I can turn around then and name my daughter it. That's the way, that how it happened. My sister named Nisha, and she repicked the middle name together off a TV show. So she'd walk around then and give people the same story that she knew, because she knew, because we would lose a great. We all would lose a get along. So I tell she's story, and this heifer take it and tell people and turn it to make me out to be the liar. So what she did then, psychotic heifer she is, is name her last three children my daughter's middle name. I mean, I met the name, but I mean to see him. How you can hear somebody so much, but still you must get a piece of all of her children. I don't get it. If uh, if this was a lifetime movie, I would be in a basement. I'm telling you. That's how sick this woman is. Anyhow, I am saying all of this to prove something and to put a point out there. If when I ever hear that Joy get shot up or mug and they kill or some shit, check my brother and she. Let me tell you what. My sister and I these work together. So one day, no, my sister tell me, because they don't got my number. They don't have my number. The tell, so this woman called my sister. Let me see the woman here, Claire. The woman said, hi, Ingrid. My name is Claire, and um, I would like you to do some work for me. So my sister said, um, she asked the lady, how you hear about me? Who recommended me? Because what people don't know is one man, the same way for work. Once you can't call him near, we know it's some sort of freaky shit about it. Only one single come out. This man is saying we, where he want me to work. But nobody will know it. So if they can't give the name, something is wrong. The woman that says, she started to fumble with herself and she said, oh, um, I had this number so long, but I ain't call it. But no, I call it. I, re I can't remember who gave me the number. My sister said, this chill can't wait. So she, she said, uh-uh, something in right here. So she tell the woman no, and she gave the woman this number. I tell the woman, we'll call this lady. This woman does do the same work as us. Anyhow, my sister say, three days later, not a week, three days later, this person called. But you could not tell if it was a man or woman because they were using like this automated voice machine or something. Because my sister said it sounded like she was speaking to a robot. She said, this person called and they said, yeah, well, I am, I, am, I want somewhere to do. And my sister was like, but who recommended me to you? He called the same woman, Claire. Oh, Claire, give me your number. So my sister was like, but I refused to work for her because she could not tell me who recommended me. Why would she give you then my number? Because obviously I could work for you either. You understand? So it seems to be funny. So we was thinking, well, the sister in law saying she put a world goose chase. Would it be possible that she would just set up this thing to get me, I don't know, out in the open? For what reason? I don't think that the way how she is, I don't think that that will even fulfill any pleasure in she knows. So my thing is, was this telling us some way to get me killed or something? You understand what you're trying to say? Yeah. Because it seems a bit strange to me. Because if I call you to work for me, and I said, no, I ain't coming because you can't tell me who recommended me, why would you then give my number to somebody? I quit thinking so. 
You understand? Quickly, so why would you do that? You can't say for a fact that we work good on it. So, so why would you give the number to somebody else if I ain't work for you? So my sister said, look, the, the, you can't tell if it's a man or a woman. And then you, well, how, why would you think that a voice machine? Uh, why would we accept a job from a voice machine? So I am saying that something is not right. And anytime when I hear Joel Watson, you will get killed. Check the two of them. The police guard, check the two of them. You hear? You put this one house and check the two of them or Ingrid, I don't want to call she, she surname. But Ingrid, if Ingrid, if you hear Ingrid or Joy get killed, I'm telling you, check the two of them. Because something is not right. Something is definitely not right. Why would you have to discuss, disguise your voice to call and make an appointment for work? Ain't it right? So all these things are adding up, adding up, and they're constant. Because up to this day, they're still doing things. You understand? They're still doing things. The fact that they know the inspector ain't doing nothing, and the fact that they know I call, because I know that by now they know that I call the Ministry of Health, and if the Ministry of Health already could tell me they can't do nothing about it, huh? them know that they are free to do as they please. Okay? They are free to do as they please, because they're, they're going back doing the things. But let them do the things. You have to do it. You have to do it. She's free to live her life, to go and teach people children, to put shit in the children's head, or, or to get back at a parent that she don't like. And then I'm supposed to sit down here and accept that I can't do anything about it. You ain't a liar. I'm not going to put up with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put up with it. She has done too much to me. She has done too much to my family, and I, I'm putting up with it no more. So, but where, so, yeah, but where, so where do you go? You are, Joel. Where mm -hmm. do you where do you go from here? You can't move. You're not gonna move. You're not gonna leave the island. Where do you go from here? I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. My brother and put a saint to help you find her. He went and shot hell and fixed her grandmother's house. Ask you what he ever do for his father. Nothing besides putting in the mental and lay ass day to look another dog. That's all. I'm moving. I am moving. So where do, you, so where do you go from here? Me. So where do you go? Uh -huh. so you you want to live. Okay, you're not moving, but still you want to live in peace. Where do you go from here? Listen, I rectify my problems. I will get it sorted out. Ain't a problem. You can only do wicked for so long. You hear? You will only do wicked for so long. Let me tell you something. See, they got a lot of people that will never believe what I'm saying about her is true. But you want to know what can happen? Let me tell you what can happen. She got children that is not looking at her and learning from the things that she's doing. And if she don't mess with somebody up here, her children can do it. Mark my word. And they can remember we we at that miserable, miserable looking woman, the same soul. Because one of them wicked is hell already. You hear? One of them was in my nephew's ear already turning his head against his own mother. But at least my sister caught it on time. You hear? My sister caught it on time. So if she, if the people don't realize about her, her children is who's going to sell she out. Her children is who's going to sell her out. Because they're sitting on there and watching how she's doing and things that she's doing. You hear? Wicked and grudgeful. That's what it is. Wicked and grudgeful. That's all. But I am bothered. I ain't even going to say a word. You hear? Let them do as they please. Mm -hmm. Let them do it. Let them do it. Mm. I will never forgive my brother for, for sure. I don't even mind she because I pity her because I know for a fact Something wrong with her. She had to get hurt during her childhood. I know that. This woman sit down and she tell my daughter so many things. I mean, things that you will never imagine to tell a child, regardless of if it's yours or somebody else's child. I don't care what happened. If you are my enemy, I will tell you to don't let your child come on me. I want. I don't want your child at me. You know why? Because you're going to make your child say that I do anything. But I ain't going to deliberately go and do your child anything. I can tell you straight off, but keep your children at you. 
Because I tell you, you're not going to put your children to tell that Joel do a thing to them. But it things that she said to my child about me. You as a human being should never have said those to anyone's child. I, I mean, she got a lot of skeletons in she closet because in she did breed at 14. Huh? She used to be in Somerville all the time. She didn't used to go to school. When they're looking for she, she used to be in the Manning Bridge field house. I know enough about she. So that's the reason why she had to take me a OK the picture. That's the reason why she had to get me OK the picture because she know I could talk to you. That's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. She know I could talk to you. Everything, everything, everything just lead back wrong to this woman. It's lucky for it's magic, it's lucky it's all beer, it's lucky it's something. Because everything just lead back to this woman. This woman has she has is so many things that you will never believe. Because you will never believe that two people will go so far to stop you from getting true. I buy things out my own money. And if these people can stop me from buying things out my own money, they will do it. Mm? You won't come and malicious you. you I even want to talk on my sister's behalf because she got to do that herself. But I tell you, if you're supposed to get your house done, and they know, they'll put in a call and talk about you. That's how wicked these people are. You hear? That's how wicked they are. But just because them is wrong and there's be up and down through the neighborhood, people feeling all oh, them good. But I, 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 might, I don't know, but people just think different to me. But I ain't taking nobody's word for it. I did it with her, and I learned my lesson. I ain't taking nobody's word for it. I got find out for myself. I ain't taking nobody's word for it. Because when you go and sit down, and you go and take things with people saying, you follow, and you don't even know. You will follow, and you don't even freaking know. But anyhow, Sherry, as for my daughter, they have things that I will bring out, but I will bring out when the time is right. I ask questions about the situation, and... I hold what I have for the time being mm -hmm. until okay. I decide to put it out there. Oh, oh you so you may be coming back on again then. <laughs> yeah, well, oh. it's like you're one of these days, not like next week or anything. Okay, like, okay, okay. Just for the time being. Okay. I want to keep it on the cover for the time being. Okay. But I know that my sister, I know for a fact that I ain't lying. She knows this. Them know that I got everything on record. Them know. You understand mm -hmm. them? No, my daughter. No, my daughter could go and tell her straight yes. Come, mommy did play it back for me because I played it mm -hmm. for she to hear. It. Right, you hear? So you haven't decided, but, but you mm -hmm. so so you haven't decided if you're gonna release those records to me. Then those those recordings. I, I spoke to someone. I will tell you that off here. Okay, I okay. Let you know okay. what the situation. Okay, that okay, okay. But as I said. If push comes to shove and I have to do it, I don't care. I will do it. Okay. One time. Because as I said before, I do believe she should not be teaching anyone's child. I do believe she should not be teaching anyone's children, to be honest. Mm. Because who's to say she's not going to do it to somebody else's child? Well, who's, who's to say she hasn't done it already? And that's it. Who's to say she hasn't done it? Because she started with my sister's son. So who's to say that she hasn't done it already? Right. Mm -hmm. So, because I, I know I'm the only one that she, I mean, she get far with me, but I know she probably got other people out there that she dating still. She would not course. have gotten as far as uh, she done with me. But right. I know somebody who know who this person is because she ain't easy. She's not easy. Mm -hmm. You cannot show her a pair of shoes and think that she will be happy for you. It's like she do not know how to be happy for somebody. It's like jealousy. She hate to know that you are living. She hate to know that you are getting through. You understand? That's it. Okay. Right now, I was told I was smelling a lot of Jay's fuel coming down and all sort of things. So, wait, I, what, what do you what do you mean? What do you, wait, wait, wait. Cut, what do you mean? What do you mean? What is what what kind of fuel is that? Jay's fluid. You know, a uh, 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 this a cleaner is a disinfectant. Oh, a cleaner, that dark stuff. Oh. But it's, but it's, but, it's, but you can't light it on. Can you? Can it be lit? Can it be something that can cause a fire? No. This oh. is um. Oh. This is like a uh, thing is trying water to disinfect your house. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 But it can stir us and what's not. So I I don't know if the pouring it there will partly point because I haven't changed the detail yet. But at least I have. 
the tank locked off. So no water can't go into my drinking water. And plus, I don't drink for that point in the morning. I don't have a cup water from there. It's be strictly washing clothes, uh, bathing. We don't even wash my face in that water. Mm. Because you don't you, 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 you have that be, water. Don't when you water first said, it. when you first said fuel, is it fuel or fluid? I, I thought you meant fluid. Some... Sorry, fluid. Oh, okay. It's too fast. It's just fluid. Oh, I fluid, see. Not I, fuel. Because I, 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 the first thing I thought about are all the fires that are happening in Barbados. So I was like, oh my God, you need to be careful with that. Well, listen, if it happens here, <laughs> cause the materials are there. I'm telling you, the fact that I built here is the reasons, is one of the reasons for all this animosity. And the fact that they thought that I had my father's money. Okay, that's that's what have them. Everything that they did was supposed to stop me from getting through in life. It is they put my dad in the mental because they feel that I had his money. They took Victor and left him there to die like a dog, to die like a dog, because Victor had told me, get his house, bury him and take his house. Don't let the other family get him. So all these things were done so that I can't get these things. And I mean, I didn't have the money to bury my brother, so I understand it. But I feel that he should have still done anything he could have done so that Victor could have still live at least a comfortable life. But he did not do that. All of these things were done in order to spite me. So that's what I'm saying. There's no way in hell that they would have done anything that could benefit my daughter. Nothing that they could or would have benefit my daughter. You hear? No. No one can tell me that anybody that got eyes could see. You hear? Everything they did was to spite me, including manipulating my child's head. You hear? That is what it is. But they will, their time will come. Their time will come. I know that for a fact. Their time will come. You hear me? Uh, their time will come. They, he got five children and a grandchild, from what you understand. So somebody can deal with one of them. Ain't gonna be me. But I know for a fact, whatever you do in this world, you just get back. My mother said it to me once, and I realized it's true, because I was my mouth was full. And my mother said to me, one well, these days you gonna go to child, and your child can carry you alone the same way you can me alone. My child come and did worse. You hear what I tell you? My child come and did worse. So let me tell you, you just get back whatever you do. Mm -hmm. It ain't only me. Right. You will get back whatever you done. Right. So I ain't worried. I ain't worried. I find a way to get the water from coming underneath my house. And I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. I consulted with a, a, a contractor. Uh, he's an engineer. He tell me what to do. I will do it. Mm -hmm. It's not a big issue. Let them stand up. They are happy because the jealousy and the envy that they're feeling will eat them. One of these days, I can hear about them. Oh, don't worry. I ain't even worried. But that's all I have to say on that matter. Mm -hmm. I just decided I am going to clarify the situation with my daughter. I went through a lot with my daughter. I tried everything humanly possible to make my daughter comfortable. But she didn't want that. She mm -hmm. preferred to be like them two young girls out on the streets. Mm -hmm. So go long. You understand? Go long. I prefer to be able to lay down and rest myself when the nights come instead of having to deal with you constantly. I'm not doing it. Everybody don't know no no call me because I'm not answering anytime I pick up this phone and I see the hospital number, I'm not gonna answer. Because I no longer care. All I say, I could forgive her for everything, but I'm not going to forgive you for joining with that demon and telling people that I put man on you. When my sister lost the body, who do all that there? All the men that she set up my child with, or and I found, or I asked a question, the man for the G4S that she put my daughter talk to, he is the Westmore Hall congregation, um, we call it Seven Days, the Seven Days Church, is the Westmore Hall Church. The doctor that she said, said that my daughter don't have bipolar, all of them was from the Westmore Hall Church, in the Seven Day Church of Westmore Hall. So if any of that hearing me, wanna know, wanna know, you hear? Then there is the, uh, fact, the fact that she carried church, my daughter, 
I see her in front of the church. Oh, Lord, I got four children. No, I don't know what to do. Just so the people could give she things. And that's what the people do. Food, all the on clothes and all sort of things. She went quick to the store and get another child, which will make her five. And she get more things too. So she's that sort of person. Do a lot of nonsense to, to, to make people feel sad for she. And so she could get help. You understand? And with the same members from the seven days church, so they hear me, they know I lay. Cause all of these is things that I got recorded that my daughter confessed. You hear? She's evil. Okay. That woman is evil. No fuse to sit here anymore and put it with one shit, one of the sand, all the water. When I can chuck the, the garbage up over the paling, that's what I custom do. When I can do the most, you hear? When I can do the most, do them. When I got to do it. When I can't help, when I got to do it, let the envy and the jealousy eat one out to one a day. Go along. And as of that, dear Sherry, I'm done with it. As I <laughs> tell you, when the devil step in my backside and I say, I give a shit, and I put that two drawers recording in you, you do uh, a box, mm -hmm. upload them. Right. Upload them. The people that hear word for word what Joel say when they know a Joel voice. When I will know who the rest, because I tell the whole story already, when I will know who's the rest. Right. Here in yeah. a life I tell upon them. It is the truth. It ain't no lies I tell upon them. Hmm. And that is that for me, Sherry. All right. Well, I thank you. you. Thank you so very much for coming on again. And everyone, everyone was asking me, when are you going to come on next? When are you going to come on next? So I guess they're all I, ready for this third installment. I was busy. And I had some stuff dealing with because I got a friend. He would still call me and tell me about my daughter. Mm -hmm. And some of the things he would tell me, it's got me a little bit offset, mm -hmm. but it's got hard on my heart because mm -hmm. I'm not going to let her kill me, to be honest. I'm not going to let her kill me. She do what she has to do one of these days if I'm alive. Because I honestly prefer she die before me because she can suffer. I know she's going to suffer. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, is when you confront her with the truth, she just literally act like a crazy person. You mm -hmm. know, like sometimes when a child was molested or something, and the truth started to come to the surface, the way they react. Right. She just struck me. Yeah, this person told me she, the way she acts now is like she knows the truth and she knows she's lying, but she trying to suppress this memory. So I don't know. I just I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered, but. I'm telling you, one these days, one these days, girl, one mm -hmm. these days. But I appreciate you letting me come out here and put the truth out there because i telling you, every place I turn, there has been a block. You understand? Yeah. And to be honest, me too, sometimes you will sit down and talk with people and people will know that you're not lying. But they quickly saw the switch. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So I, I listen to me. Anytime anybody send you anything about me because I'm looking for my daughter to come out here. Post it. Don't hide it. Post it. You understand? When they come to you and they say you things about Joel, post it. You hear me? Post it. I, I, real, real quick. The Miss Cleota Jamont that is saying I'm not from Hillaby. I was born up in here, but up in here now 28 years, darling. Your My husband's siblings are your relatives. So I understand what you're talking about. This woman is saying, oh, I'm giving Hillaby a bad name. How am I giving Hillaby a bad name? By telling the truth? How am I giving Hillaby a bad name? I don't get it. Nothing that I said was basically about Hillaby. I talk about my sister-in-law and the things that she did and the things that she walked through Hillaby. I tell the people. So I don't understand what nonsense you come away. Anyhow, gal, get up good. <laughs> All right. So thank you. You're Sharon. welcome. You're thank welcome. You so okay, you're welcome. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you. Likewise, too. You're welcome. This is Sherry Veronica from Naked Departure Radio.